Good morning, everyone. My name is Iman Hamid. I'm an ST5 pediatric trainee at the West Yorkshire, and I'm a member of the Academic Office of PSAP CH. Welcome all to our PSAP CH platform. We are really happy to have you all today. Our session today is about the top tips and tricks that you need to boost your training application if you are applying for an ST1, ST3, or ST4 course. Just please reminder for everyone, keep your um, uh, keep your uh, microphones muted. And if you have any questions, we will have a dedicated uh, 10 minutes after each talk for uh, questions and answers. And uh, please don't forget to uh, unmute yourself when you are asked. So, or you can uh, pop in your questions in the chat and we will be more than happy to address them for you. Now, without a further delay, let's um, have our first speaker. Our first speaker is Dr. Simon Bruton. He is a general pediatrician at King's College Hospital. He is a King's College London Honorary Senior Lecturer and he is an RCPCH Officer for Recruitment. So he is our man. So welcome, Dr. Bruton. Dr. Bruton, you are, you are muted. Oh, just a minute. Oh, now I can unmute. Um, so I hope everyone's um, well. Um, obviously, by far the most important thing is the World Cup final in cricket tomorrow, but we'll do this first today. But it sounds like it's going to get rained off. Um, so um, I've got a presentation. I'm mainly going to focus on, um, on ST34 um, because that's where most of the differences have taken place um, recently. But then I'll be happy to take questions around ST12, if that makes sense. I think most people will be applying for ST34 from here. <clears throat> so um, it's not working. Try again, one second. There we go. There we go. Can everybody see that? Yes, we can. I'll try and put it on to. So, um, so this um, also what I'm about to go through has been recorded and is a webinar and it will be available on the RCPCH um, website from next week. Uh, where you won't just hear me, but you'll also hear James Clark and um, Blanche, who's one of our trainee leads for recruitment. So, but um, but I'll give the same talk now and then take questions. So, um, so focusing on this T three and four recruitment, lots of things have changed. I'm not sure um, how aware you guys are of these changes, but the the main change is this um, new syllabus that we have in paediatrics in the UK, which is called Progress Plus. And that means um, that we now have a seven year training program rather than an eight year training program. So um, people used to apply ST1 and then do three years on the SHO rotor mostly, and then transition to middle grade at ST4, five before doing specialty training at ST6, seven, eight. And now middle grade training starts at ST3 and goes through ST3 and ST4 before specialty training at ST567. So what this means is that if you um, are applying to come to the UK with a view to be successfully appointed and then think about going to specialty training at ST567, I really would advise you to apply ST3 because um, otherwise you're only gonna have about six weeks to prepare your application for ST for specialty training and it won't be enough time for you to demonstrate all of your capabilities um, you'll really struggle <clears throat> the trainees that have been here in this program in the UK from ST1 are struggling so um, so you'll be a middle grade from ST3 and I would uh, the most of the jobs will be at ST3 level so I would advise 
applying at ST3. Um, so the stages of the recruitment process are um, carried out on Oriel. Um, so if you apply, you'll fill in the application form. You'll be, um, it will all be filled out on Oriel, which will collect everything. And there's a selection of questions, which are long listing questions, which are essential criteria. And then the rest of it goes into short listing. <coughs> At the end of this, um, assuming you get through long listing, um, your application form will be scored by two um, shortlisters, um, and then the score will be added together, and um, the the top number of people will be invited to interview, depending on the number of interview places. Um, we've not had an issue with the number of interview places over the last couple of years because it will be online, but. Um, but nevertheless, um, we'll talk a bit more about that, about what you need to put into your form. So um, the application is for the whole country. So England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. Um, there's, um, as I said, it's a standard application form, but then there's the white space areas where you need to write your answers for shortlisting. And if you get invited to an interview, it's a 50 minute interview this year with two different panels. So there's two 25 minute panels covering six stations. We'll go through what those stations are. And it's the interview score, which determines your, your ranking um, on in, in terms of which posts you'll be offered. So um, if you're not already signed up to Oriel, do it as soon as possible. Um, it is clunky and um, quite unforgiving, but um, saves all of the data and um the key thing is is that if the um i can't remember what the date is for your final application make sure you hand in at least two days before to allow for computer problems it problems because if you leave it to the last minute and your application form doesn't get in until 10 seconds after the closing the closing time <coughs> your form won't be counted <coughs> excuse me um so um, all of the, um, the kind of long listing criteria are listed on the RCPCH website in the person specification. So make sure you read those um, and ensure that you have, um, have all of those before applying. And then also there's quite long detailed um, information available on the RCPCH website about what we're looking for in shortlisting. So we've kind of told you what to write. So if you don't write it, then you're not taking advantage of all the resources that are there. <coughs> so long listing completed by early January. Um, and then um, short listing will take place in January and February. And invites to interview will be from the 22nd of February. Um, so ST3, this is the level of um, clinical experience that we expect you to have. So if you're applying for ST3, um, you need to have two out of three of the written MRCPCH papers. Um, and you need to have the paediatric capability form signed off by your supervisor, which is quite detailed. And again, is downloadable from the RCPCH website. And it will um, demonstrate that you've got the capabilities um, of a ST2 training. It will take your supervisor quite a long time to do this. So, um, so get the form, go through it with them. It'll probably be new to them. So, um, but you, you know, obviously that's your responsibility to get that form completed. <clears throat> um, you must have at least 12 months experience of working in pediatrics of which six months should be in neonatology and six months in general pediatrics at least. And the neonatal competencies we expect for ST3, one second. Uh, that you can safely initiate resuscitation of a term-born baby and, um, and kind of be there and carry out the initial resuscitation. <coughs> um, and also you can safely manage the common pediatric emergencies that you would expect to see in the emergency department. So we'd expect you to be able to start managing asthma, bronchiolitis, sepsis, DKA, 
and be able to initiate those management. We'll also expect you to be up to date with safeguarding and be able to talk through um, safeguarding. We don't necessarily expect you to know all of the UK, <clears throat> all of the UK words and nomenclature. That's not so important, but we do expect you to to understand um, the safeguarding principles. And um, and the thing is that you need these things by the time of the application, not by the time of starting the post. So, um, so you can't say, but by, you know, by next September, I will have these things. If you haven't got them by the time of the application, you won't be shortlisted. Um, so ST4 is pretty much the same, but we expect a higher level of competency and capability and a higher level in the written MRC PCH papers. We expect them to all three written papers to have been completed. Um, previously, the clinical exam needed to be completed by the end of ST3. Now it's the end of ST4. So, um, but obviously if you have got the full membership, it makes life easier. Um, and here we expect you to be able to safely initiate resuscitation of a term neonate and lead a team and have some experience of managing prematurely born babies. And we expect you to be able to lead a team in the emergency department managing the common pediatric um, reasons for attending the emergency department and actually lead the team. Um, and again, we expect you to have all these competences and time and training before the time that you submit the application form. So, so you need this certificate of core pediatric training capabilities form, and it is based on Progress Plus. So, um, if you, um, as I said, this this um, this presentation will be on the MRCPCH um, on the RCPCH website, and again, but but find that form. Just type that in Certificate of Core Pediatric Training Capabilities form, and then make sure your supervisors complete it. So additional qualifications. So in the past, um, intercalated degrees have counted as extra points. Um, the whole of the UK um, recruitment body has, has decided that this year intercalated degrees will not count as extra points. So it's not me that made that decision, that's a UK decision. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I agree with it, but my opinion's irrelevant. Um, but all postgraduate degrees, so postgraduate MSCs, MDs, PhDs count, but not training MDs. So, so if it's um, you know, a three-year training program where you end up with the initials MD, that's not a research degree. Um, we expect you to be able to list your clinical skills and be able to describe exactly your competency in them and how you've measured those competencies. So if you've collected that information on, um, on ePortfolio, on Kaizen, or if you've got your own logbook, we expect you to be able to demonstrate that. Clinical experience is obviously really important. And the thing we want um, is for you to be able to reflect on what experience you've had and how it's changed your practice. Um, all of the people that have got access to Kaizen will be very familiar with this um, and be very used to reflecting. Um, but, um, but again, we would expect you to be able to have that experience and that reflection. Quality improvement projects. Um, if you're talking about QIPs, um, we do expect you to talk about your role and exactly what your role was, what the project was, what the outcome was and what change happened. And to describe one or two PDSA cycles at least. So um, it's not good enough to just say, you know, I was involved in a project on you know, measuring the incidence of urinary tract infections in, in the emergency department. You need to explain what the idea of the project was, what your role was, what the PDSA cycle was, what the outcome was, and then hopefully then what the next PDSA cycle was. Um, same with leadership and management. Um, so you don't have to just um, talk about leadership and management from um, medicine. It can be from you know outside of medicines, so any groups that you've been involved in where you are, um, you know, where you have a leadership or a managerial responsibility. Make sure you list them and talk about your reflections on it and how that will make you a better pediatrician of the future. Um, research and academic achievements, um, obviously important, um, but again, um, you need to describe your role. Um, and if you've got any publications, that's great. Um, 
teaching the same thing. So, um, so it's not good enough to just say I was involved in teaching undergraduates and I love teaching undergraduates. That's lovely, but it won't score you many points. Um, you need to talk about what the teaching program was that was initiated, what your role was within it, the collection of feedback from the attendees, your reflections on the feedback and how it's changed subsequent teaching plans for the future. So um, it's a really important to, to get as much points from that as possible. It's an area that we can all score loads of points in. And the supporting statement actually scores the most number of points from the application form. I think it's seven or eight points, I can't remember. And um, so here is where you're going to describe um, what it is about you that's gonna make you a really good pediatrician. So you need to try and write things that are gonna differentiate you from others. So while it's really important to say that you love working with children and young people and why, that is important, um, but you need to talk about what it is about you that will make you a good pediatrician, what you wanna do in the future, why you're applying and why you're going to be an asset to the training program. Um, so that needs to really um, come across. Make sure you spend a lot of time on that box because, it, as I said, it's worth the most number of points. Many people apply and don't put anything into that box. They're basically um, ensuring that they won't be shortlisted. Um, so preferencing um, opens after shortlisting. You can preference anywhere within the UK. Um, the th most important thing is don't put down a post that, in, that you've preferenced that you don't want to go to. I know it sounds silly, but people do because they feel that they, they are duty bound to, put, to tick certain boxes. But then when they get offered them, they don't want to go there. If you get offered a post that you've um, preferenced and you turn it down, your application is finished. So, um, so only preference posts that you genuinely would like to go to and and, and work at. Um, we're not quite sure how many posts will be available at ST3-4, but we expect most of them to be at ST3. Um, and, um, and also you can change your preferences until the end of the offer process. So you can remove posts um, or change the order that they're in. Um, interviews take place on those dates there in March and are online, 50 minute virtual interview. There's two 25 minute stations um, with actually three scenarios in each. So station one is communication, career motivation and reflective practice. And station two is clinical thinking, governance and leadership. Um, so you have um, two assessors in each station. The communication and clinical scenarios are, are both 10 minute stations. All of the others seven and a half minute interviews. So adding up to 25 minutes each station you'll get a few minutes before the communication station to read the scenario and prepare yourself. And then you'll go into the room and you'll immediately start communicating with a role player on the, um, on the scenario. Um, and then you'll move into career motivation and reflective practice. Um, and then with the next station, after a brief pause, you'll start off with the clinical thinking scenario. There's no um, curve balls here. We've not put any um, clinical thinking scenarios in which we wouldn't expect an ST3 or an ST4 um, trainee to be able to handle. Um, but the key thing is, is that when you're talking through the clinical thinking, it's about how you manage the team as well and how you work as part of an effective team. And then there's a governance um, um, scenario, which it will be on a kind of incident that we give you and how you manage it and a leadership scenario to demonstrate your leadership skills and competences. Two assessors in each, total score 200. You need to score 55% to be appointable, but scoring 55% does not mean you'll be appointed. It's, po it's probable that most people who are successful will be scoring more around 70%. And, and in terms of the, what I mean by successful is the ones who will be offered the post just because of the ranking system. So, um, and your ranking is based purely on the interview score. But if there is, um, if two people have the same score, then we look at the shortlisting score and use that to differentiate them. So I've really um, talked through this thing. So um, the career motivation, make sure you've got your own selected portfolio that you can talk through. Don't have too many things in front of you. You're not gonna be able to demonstrate them to us. 
they're there for you. So have you know four or five things that you can really talk through in some detail and um, things that you really want to talk about that you can reflect on that have changed your practice or demonstrate um, you know why you're going to be such a great pediatrician or why you're such a great leader. So um, but don't have too many things because you'll end up just confusing yourself at the, at the interview. Reflective practice. Um, so we'll ask you to talk through a scenario that you've been involved in. Can either, either one that went not very well or one that went well, what your reflection was, how it changed your practice and how you disseminated that learning. Um, so it's don't spend five minutes talking about the scenario. Score very few points for that. It's about the reflection from the scenario. And um, so that's the key thing is, you know, we want to hear uh, briefly, very briefly what happened, but then, you know, how did that change your practice? What did you reflect on and how did you um, implement change in other people? Clinical reasoning I've talked about. Um, governance will assess your awareness and understanding of the role of governance in the workplace. Um, I would, I would um, recommend that you do some reading around governance frameworks. And the main thing you're going to need to know about is how complaints are handled and how adverse incidents are handled. So complaints, um, you try to deal with them at the time of the complaint being happened with a senior member of staff and having a nice kind of open conversation with the person who's complaining. Otherwise, you direct them to PALS, Patient Advice Liaison Service, where the complaint is collected. And then the complaint is answered with interviews, all people have been involved in the complaint. So, um, and then we try to then use the complaints um, to improve practice. Um, leadership as well. So you'll be given a scenario on leadership and we'll ask you to talk through how you would manage that. It's often around managing a busy shift. So with limited resources. So it's that kind of scenario that we'll be expecting you to talk about. And the key thing is you use everybody in your team and you don't try and do everything by yourself. These are what we're looking for in a pediatrician. I think you've probably all seen this list before. Um, you'll notice that knowledge is not there. This is mainly for ST1. Knowledge is important for ST3, 4. And, um, but for ST1, this is what we'd be looking for. But for ST3, 4, we'd also expect you to have clinical competency and capability and you know, essential knowledge of, um, of all of the standard things we expect a pediatrician at that level to have. So key hints and tips, get your oral count set up early. Don't leave it until the last day. Um, if you go over the timeline, you will not, there's no, there's no, no matter how polite and nice you are, it will not count. Um, keep an eye out for emails from Oriel. They do often go into your junk inbox. So, um, so make sure you keep an eye out for those. Um, prepare your selected portfolio of things that you want to talk about during the career motivation section. Read the guidance on, the, on all of the questions that are on the RCPCH website. Um, try to treat the virtual interview as if it's in person and preference carefully, but don't limit yourself, but make sure you don't pick anywhere where you wouldn't go. Um, because you'll probably be kicked out of the process if you um, if you turn that down. Um, offers, um, once all the interviews are complete, offers start going out. Um, and um, you get 48 hours to decide what you want to do with your offer. So you can accept. You can accept with upgrades, which means you accept. But if one of your higher offers, one of your higher preference posts becomes available, you'll move into that. You can hold it for a short period of time while you're considering other options and you can decline it. So it might be that you've applied for ST3 and ST4 um, and then you might want to hold until you hear the outcome of the other, of the other post. Um, and then there's multiple iterations of offers over the, um, over the next few weeks as the process is worked out. Um, these are dates. So um, adverts will appear on the 16th of November. So next week, applications open on the 17th. They close on the 8th of December. Interview booking in those dates there and the interview window I've given you already. So, um, but really important to get that form completed by your supervisor with as much detail on it as possible. There's some tick boxes and there's some areas where um, 
where the supervisor will need to type in and it's all mapped to the progress plus competencies. There's quite a lot of work for them. You also need to arrange your own GMC registration. This is not carried out by, um, by the RCPCH or by the deanery where you would work. Um, so we've had a few people this year who've not been able to get their GMC sorted in time. Um, so if that is, is the case, it may well be that um, you don't get the chance to take up a post that you've been offered. And it may be that we, um, we keep your, um, we try to offer you a post the following year. Um, so we expect you to have it organized well before August. Don't leave it to the last minute. Um, and again, there's lots of information in the applicant guide on the RCPCH website. Um, so where can you go for guidance? So RCPCH website, there's the applicant guide, shortlisting guide. Um, you can go for Health Education England training website for general information and timelines. The RCPCH doesn't actually run the operational aspects of the process. That's run by the Paediatric National Recruitment Office, which is based in the West Midlands. And that's their website there. So if there's a problem with your shortlisting, longlisting, it is this, they're the people that run it. Um, and as I said, this webinar will be on the RCPCH YouTube channel. Um, so that's me zooming through my presentation. I can um, talk about ST1s briefly if people want, or we can just, but why don't we take questions on ST34 first? Some candidates are asking about the ST1. So if you can talk about it briefly and then we'll have all the questions together. Yeah, so, so in terms of the process, it's very similar. So um, um, you'll need to fill in the, it's open now, um, and um, you'll need to fill in the Oriel um, application form. All of the things that I've said around um, the white space answers are really just as important in terms of the information that goes into them. Um, and um, with ST1, we don't expect any previous prior pediatric knowledge. Um, so the, all of the clinical questions are, are, are things that you would commonly see in the world of adult medicine. So asthma, sepsis, DKA, and based in kind of like eight-year-olds to 12-year-olds. Um, there's only four stations at interview. So there is um, clinical thinking, communication, reflective practice, and motivation. Um, <clears throat> and again, we use those, um, those post, <clears throat> sorry, got a frog in my throat. We use those, um, um, that score to, to rank you. Um, and um, we've got more interview places available this year than we did last year. So we can interview 750 people this year for ST1. We're not sure of the numbers that we'll be able to interview for ST3, 4 yet, but it will be about 300 in total. Um, but again, that final box about, you know, your person, about your, what makes you a really excellent candidate for paediatrics is just as important in SD1 as it is in 3, 4. So don't leave any boxes empty and um, put in what you can. Get other people to read your form beforehand, uh, before you submit it. Um, so you can imagine I get sent a lot of forms to look at by trainees that have worked with me in the past. You know, and you've got to be quite brutal when you give feedback because you want to give, you want to give these people the, um, the best chance of succeeding. So I'm pretty sure I've upset somebody um, yesterday by sending them back their feedback. But hopefully they'll listen and they'll be successful. Um, any other questions about ST1? I've got a question in the chat. Uh, they're asking about the different, uh, they're asking how to write in the white space. Uh, should it be bullet points or like an essay? So, um, so Oreo itself is not very good at editing in terms of um, font and stuff. So you can put in bullet points, but then Oreo will delete them. So, so, um, so I think I would suggest um, short sentences separated by paragraphs um and um and talk through all of the things that you want to achieve within the white space sadly bullet points don't go into oriel so they don't cut and paste into it it would just be block text uh, 
Um, I'm looking at the other bits in the chat. Um, yeah. Difference between, yeah, so the difference between clinical skills and clinical experience is, is a, something that comes up. And um, so clinical skills really is what it says on the tin. So it's your um, everything from, you know, managing an airway um, to gaining intravenous or intraosseous access by whatever route you're going to do. It's lumbar punctures. It is, it's, the, it's the actual clinical skills that you've obtained. It could also be um, writing out patient letters. Um, it could be any kind of skill um, which you need to be effective in your post. Um, clinical experience is, is what it says on the tin. So it's your, it's, it's your experience of managing you know, um, a wide range of children, young people and families with many different conditions um, you know, over the time that you've been a doctor. And it's then describing those experiences and reflecting on them and talking about your, how it's changed your practice. So one is skills and one is experience. We appreciate that they are, that they are linked and there may be a bit of repetition. So the CREST certificate. So, so, the, so the CREST certificate you only need for um, ST1 application. So for ST34, it is that form that I referenced in the, um, in the, for, in the presentation. But CREST um, demonstrates that you've achieved all of the competencies we expect of a foundation level two trainee at the end of foundation training. So yes, so you do need that to be signed by, it doesn't, I don't think it needs to be signed by a pediatric doctor. But it needs to be signed by somebody who um, can sign off foundation competencies and demonstrate that you've achieved, you've achieved everything during foundation training at roughly at that level um, and have that signed off and certified. Um, will the interview six questions or four questions? So six questions is for ST3, four, four is for ST2. Both of them are in two stations. So ST12 is two 20 minute um, stations um, and uh, ST34 is two 25 minute stations. Should you have MRC-PCH before applying for ST1 post? Um, no, you don't need any um, exams um, before applying for ST1. Um, you just need to be able to demonstrate um, why you wanna do pediatrics and why you're gonna be a good pediatrician. So you don't need MRC-PCH to apply for ST1. ST3, you need two written papers. ST4, you need three written papers. Um, there you go, so someone's answered it for me. Uh, how, many how many consultant need to sign the form for ST34? Um, so, so you can load up more than one form if one consultant is talking about certain competencies and another consultant is talking about other competencies. Um, but or one consultant can do them all if they know everything and if they've taken the advice from other people to be able to sign it off. So usually one or maximum two forms. Research question, if no solid research done, what else can be written there to gain some points? Yeah, um, um, so going to journal clubs, um, talking through, um, you know, research papers that you've read as a group together, um, thinking about some possible the sort of research ideas for the future and who you would like to work with. Uh, you'll score one point for journal clubs. And um, you've got to bear in mind that most people don't have any research. So, um, so it's useful if you have got it, but the majority of people don't have any proper research. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. What about audit and QIP for ST1? It's the same as I said for um, ST34. So QIP, you need to describe your role. Uh, what the project was, what you were doing, what you were trying to achieve, what change happened, and talk through your PDSA cycles. If you're not familiar with those, have a look at the, um, if you just type in PDSA cycle, QIP, you'll see lots of information about, about that. Um, and um, and again, research, I think I've answered it. Um, it's nice if you've got it, it's not important if you don't have it. Um, is there a need to do more than one audit over the last two years? No. Uh, if it's a good audit and it was carried out well and it took a long time and, and you had a solid role within it and you can reflect on what you've achieved and if it's led to any change, 
then one good audit is better than three rubbish audits. So, um, so I think that's that's fine. Um, what about something about? Can you please reassure them that the competency form could be signed by? Yes, so absolutely, the, they, it can be signed by your overseas um, consultant. It, um, it doesn't need. It's not a UK consultant that signs the competency form. It's the consultants that you work with. Um, so someone said, "Is it being recorded?" It is being recorded. Yeah, it is. Um, so what about internationally posted posters and published papers? Yep. Yeah, so let's put out everything. So yeah, even if it's a local, if it's a um, you know a a national poster presented um, at a conference in your country. If it's an international poster and if you've got any published papers then list them all down they will score points um, but as i said most people won't have any um, um any um research so it's nice if you've got it teaching and presentation how many needed the key thing is is to describe what you've done talk about feedback that you've taken, talk about how you've reflected on that feedback and how you've changed the teaching programme for the future and how you work together as a team. So it's more about talking about exactly what your role was, what you did, how it went, how you collected feedback and, um, and how you then changed subsequent teaching. Um, so how could I get its record? I don't know, I don't understand that question. Uh. It will be it will be uploaded to our BSAPCH website and our YouTube channel as well. Okay. Um, can I apply from outside UK for ST1? Absolutely, you can. Yeah, but you do have to get your own GMC membership sorted. How can I document our teaching activities? So it's all on the um, application form. So the Oriel form has boxes for collecting all of this. But I would suggest you start typing it into Word now to capture everything that you can of, of um, QIP, teaching, research, if you've got it, clinical skills, clinical experience. Just start writing out those things now um, and, um, and then you can edit them when you put them into Oriel. Um, could I send you the link for the YouTube channel, please? Like, I'll, I'll, I'll forward it to the, um, to the main website, to the main, to, 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 to your email. Thank you. They're asking all the personal statements. Uh, what exactly outstanding features are you expecting in a pediatrician that will stand out for the post? Sorry, say, I didn't hear it very well. What exactly outstanding features that you are expecting in a pediatrician? For them to stand up. So, what, what, should, like examples uh, on a personal statement? Yeah, so, so it's um, it, it's it's a, in terms of teaching skills and competencies. It really is. It's kind of what I've said. It's about you don't have to have been teaching pediatricians if you're applying to ST one. It can be teaching any group of um, healthcare providers. But it's about describing what your teaching project was, what your teaching session was. The feedback you collected and how you edited your teaching subsequently and how you improved it. it the teaching is always about the learners and not about the person who is giving the teaching so if, if it comes across when you're writing that all the teacher that it's all about you and not about your learners that won't score you many points it's about um, how you delivered it how you learned from your learners to improve it for the future and then what you did subsequently to make it better. <clears throat> Can I mention my teaching with medical students? Absolutely, 100%. So, um, so describe your teaching with the medical students. Um, oh, thank you, they've shared the YouTube um, um, channel. Um, so, um, so describe um, your teaching with the medical students, how you did it, what different types of um, sessions you ran. You may have run tutorials and bedside teaching. But just think about how did you improve your teaching over the period of time that you were doing it? There is a question from Raida. For ST3 and 4, if I started doing an audit project and did not finish it yet, can I write it? Yeah, you, you can, absolutely. So, so describe um, what the project was, what your role was within the project and what, what you were planning to do and what the kind of audit project outline was. 
Um, but the fact it wasn't completed is fine. That's life. You know, this is the application form happens at a moment in time. And at that moment in time, you're still doing things. So, um, so ab absolutely, you know, put as much of the space as you can um, you know, in, into those answers. If I worked in pediatrics as a GP, not a pediatrician, should I mention this? So, so, so yeah, I think you should. Um, and this is really relevant for, um, for the way pediatrics is going in the UK anyway. So we're moving more towards what we call integrated care. So where we have um, pediatricians working side by side with GPs in primary care. So I now run a clinic once a month where I go into a GP practice and I see the, um, the children have been referred by three GP practices within a GP practice rather than a hospital. Um, do experience years make a preference for ST3-4 acceptance? Um, so so um, obviously experience and skills are important and it, it depends about what you want to be in the future. If you're applying to be a specialty um, trainee, as I said, you're going to really struggle to get all the information ready for the application form by, um, you know, by, by October, November, having just started in September. So I would suggest you apply for ST3 and give yourself an extra year to make yourself ready to become a specialty trainee. If you're applying to be a general pediatrician and you've got lots of general pediatric experience, then um, that makes more sense in many ways to apply for ST4. Um, someone is asking, can I apply for ST4 after finishing all the NRCBCH parts and being accepted in an ST1 and enrolled in it? So apparently he's an ST1 trainee, but he got the full membership. So, so, so you can, yeah, yeah. So. If you're currently an ST1 and you but you think you want to fast track and want to go for ST4, then you can apply for it. You don't obviously don't resign from your ST1 post, um, and um, but you can apply. Um, absolutely, there's nothing stopping you from applying. Yeah. Is it portfolio important before or after service visit? So, so e portfolio or Kaizen is the um, is the e-portfolio that we use within the UK for our CPCH. Um, so um, that will be um, given to you um, when you start the training program. Um, so, but it's about how you collect your information at the moment. You may have your own e-portfolio, um, but so it, it, it's just a way, it's, it's a repository of collecting information. So that's all it is really, but, and it encourages reflection. So, um, so it's about just, just it's writing the answers and giving your own answers to cover all those areas. All right, we've got one minute. Any last minute question for our assignment? Can the seven year program be shortened into four or five? Um, so it used to be that the eight year program could be shortened into five years. I think the seven year program also could probably be shortened into five years if you're accelerating. Um, so you can do level one training in three years, which is ST1 to four. Um, and then you could do um, ST567 in, um, in two years if you were training to be a general pediatrician. Um, you, would, you wouldn't be able to shorten it by much if you're applying to be a specialty consultant. I guess my question is, why would you want to shorten it? You're a consultant for a long time, trust me. So um, I would suggest you enjoy being a trainee uh, if I'm applying for ST34, should I have two core pediatric training certificates or only one? Uh, you can have one. Um, well, actually, you might need two because um, ST... Um, um, no, I think one that demonstrates that you've completed all of the level one competencies will be fine for both. Um, so you, 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 you probably could, could use the same one to apply for both, um, both posts. Right. Well, Thank you so much, Simon. It's a oh, you're welcome. As usual. Uh, always enjoy it. So, and, um, and best of luck, everybody. And loads of information out there. Make sure you access it. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Cheers. Bye.
All right, now let's move to our third speaker and she will talk to us about the training from a trainee point of view. So our third speaker is Isra, Isra Ibrahim. She's an ST1 pediatric trainee at West Yorkshire. She graduated from University of Khartoum and came to UK at 2021 and then successfully, successfully entered the training at 2022. Professionally, she has a vast neonatal experience and she loves the neonatal medicine. Personally, she loves to read and color. Now let's welcome Isra and hear from her about the, tra the, tra the training application from her perspective. Welcome. Welcome, Isra. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi. Hi, everyone. And is everyone hearing me clearly? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I know it is a long, 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 long morning in the weekend. And I know everyone is, is eager to go uh, just to have some, some break from that. So I will, I will be fast. I will try to cover whatever our uh, esteemed uh, speaker, Simon and Manal didn't cover. And hopefully the, if this is resonate with you, I will be happy with that. If one word stayed with you, I will be very happy about that. So pediatric ST1, uh, uh, I will speak about pediatric ST1. I'm trying to make it as real as possible. So I, I just have a photo of what, uh, you can have a resources and what it looks like, which is a very valuable resources in the RCBCH website. So we will speak about the guidance from RCBCH. This is, will be a little bit repetitive, but it is uh, nevertheless, it is of paramount uh, importance. Uh, we'll uh, speak about the process of application, timeline, and you better stick to this timeline or, or uh, you will not have a successful one. And what make your application yours? Make it special, make it about you. And then last thing, we'll speak about the summary and question as well. So just word, I know it is, uh, after I got my training, I know it is. It looks a little bit high for me to say, enjoy the process. It is, it is a learning experience. You will not be the same after completing about four months or five months of application and process. You will not be the same, you will know at least you will know you will have your CV up to date. You will know how to prepare for interview. You will know how 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 to write an applications. You will have um, um, an idea about the system in the UK at least. So enjoy the process. It is a learning experience. So what about the RC Royal College resources? Again, we stress that it is valuable because it is the benchmark that we will uh, the, your application will be scored against. So you need to look at it. So if you Google um, uh, RCBCH ST1 applicant guide, you will have this page in, in front of you, with which will have all the information. So you will have this page. And if you scroll down in this page, you will have this document, which is very important, all of it. So the first one, uh, the so pediatric ST1 applicant guidance is a very important document that answer a lot of questions that we didn't address in the, uh, we didn't have the time to address in these presentations or this, uh, uh, for example, about fast, try, fast, tracking, uh, fast, uh, fast tracking, later on, if you, if you cannot start at the same date, you got the post and you cannot start at the same date, what to do. So it has a very valuable information. And also for, uh, for each step, it describes the step and what is expected from you. So it is very important to see pediatric ST1 applicant guidance. And parallelly in ST3 and ST4, they will have similar thing. Uh, so all of these are very important. And if uh, this is the longest um, uh, reference or longest document, the, the other are very short. So this is the timetable. You will find this timetable and, and, and you need to um, um, address these uh, dates. If you didn't uh, address these dates, you will uh, at one point, if you, if you miss your deadline of you miss, um, uh, for example, if you, got an off, uh, if you got an offer and you miss the time of you have an interview and you didn't pick your slots and you don't have for the slot, uh, everyone picked their slot and you have only one slot left, it will be, uh, it will be a little bit difficult for you uh, to, to proceed. So just keep in mind about your dates. So to, success, to have a successful application, you need to go from the beginning of advertising until you submit your paperwork. Um, uh, you need to complete all of this step to have a successful applications. So 
What about application and long listing? It is basically the first thing, and I, I know that they spoke in uh, about them in length. It is the same. I will not add anything. Uh, to them. It is basically, are you eligible or not eligible to, uh, to apply to ST1 training? It is essential um, uh, criteria. So you, where you will find it? You will find it in the pediatric um, uh, uh, person specification document in the in the same uh, web page I, sh I showed you. So the essential criteria is this criteria. And, and be mindful about uh, the crest form. You need to tick each tick. I have a colleague who didn't take all the texts. I think she missed two texts. And they have to return the Chris form. Chris form is incomplete because he didn't take so and so. So be mindful of, uh, about that. Be mindful in Chris form, you need to sign each, each page. Be mindful about that as well. You need to have an Oriel account. They uh, already say that and um, uh, to, apply, to apply for ST1. So this is to show you how Oriel looks like or application looks like. So you have these tabs, which is, it is, as you say, it is like an arrow. You progress from one to other. Anyhow, you can fill any one of these um, at any time, except confirm and submit. If you confirm and submit, you cannot change your applications. In each tab, there is under tab as well. So it is just basically your personal inf information and background. So it is very easy uh, to do. So this is the second tab that has five sub tabs. So the reference, you need reference and they will send after you have an offer and accepted the offer, they will send to the reference to, ha uh, to, to ask about you. Uh, and you may, at the beginning of your application, you will ask the reference, oh, I will put you as a reference and so on, so on, so on, and have agreed uh, agree to that. And by the end of the fourth month, because we, you apply now and by April you got the offer, or by March, you get the offer. So you need to remind them that um, um, uh, I, I, uh, uh, I was su successful in your application. A reference um, uh, request will be uh, sent to you. Would you please uh, fill it out? So just remind them. Then we'll speak about shortlisting. They already spoke about shortlisting, so I will not uh, spend a lot of time in that. So um, shortlisting. So, you are eligible to apply to ST1. So you have long listing and, and uh, as I said, be mindful of the dates. So there is no use to just check every single day between the two dates, like for example, application closed until the uh, long listing. So, so between these two, there will, not, there will not be news. And then after that, after you get long listed that you are eligible, basically you are eligible to apply to ST1. Now it's the time for scoring an elimination stage one, which is the, uh, uh, the, the uh, at this point, you don't need to do anything else. So you already applied and you already filled your uh, applications and uh, you already filled the white spaced, um, uh, the white spaces in your application. So uh, they will score it. So this is again, the document uh, in the same page, I. I I, I said in the front. So one of it is um, uh, application scoring and frame uh, framework. So it appear like this, and you need to uh, to read it carefully because when you fill the white space area, try to just target what they want. It is tick box. If you have this tick box, you will have this score. If not, you will not uh, you will not have the score. And there is two assessor. That's why it is. The, the score for all your um, field area is 30, but there is two assessors, so it will be 60. So you can get 35, you can get uh, 40, you can get 50, so it's different. So this is the document where you will find it. So uh, application from scoring, uh, um, uh, shortlisting scoring framework. So this is where you'll find it. And the personal specification is above it as well. So this is the assessment area uh, and the score of each one. So it is eight, uh, um, uh, eight areas we need to cover. And where you will find it in your application, this white space, you will find it in the third tab, supporting information, and you will find it in supporting, uh, supporting evidence. So this tab, you will find this white space area. Uh, the evidence tab has um, also, uh, it's also very important. It, 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 if you have a course, if you have achievement, if you have something, you can put it there as well. But the white space in the supporting tab. So this is the score. If you have any additional qualifications, you just put it there. 
And then transferable clinical scale. I know this is a little bit, to be honest, uh, even in our years, between the transferable clinical scale and transferable clinical experience, there was a lot of confusions. Uh, anyhow, the skills mean skills, clinical or non-clinical. So the clinical skills, like your procedures, uh, like your uh, um, examining the patients, um, uh, taking the history, and so on. So, and non-clinical skill like communications, uh, team leader, uh, problem solving, and so on. So, so it is a skills uh, that carry with you. Your experience speak about the experience itself. So. Uh, speak about your experience. Where did you work before? For example, um, uh, after uh, you work in the pediatric or you work in, in the enduring the internship, what did you work for? After that, what did you do? So make it like a story. And in, in each in each um, uh, in each placement enhance your uh, enhance your uh, criteria, and I found it very useful to have a. Uh, so some people are very technical, so they will use a computer. But I use um, a notepad, and I write uh, in each paper. I write, for example, clinical skills. I like I, I write teaching in the next, and I write my point what what I have, and then after that I formulate it in a paragraph. Then after that, you will have quality improving project. So an audit. So it can be part of, uh, and, and uh, it can be part of your uh, departmental audit. Uh, for example, uh, when I wrote in my, in, in my part, uh, I was working, working in uh, a um, neonatal unit and we had to teach the, uh, the nurses how to do the long line or pick line or percutaneous uh, central lines. Uh, and we have a data before that, like we collected the data, the time needed for the long line. So, so from the time we identify the need for the long line until the long line has been in and the, and the complication and so on. So because only the doctor were doing it and we only were two doctors in a very big uh, tertiary neonatal unit. So it, it takes time to do that. Uh, but but when we teach the nurses and we supervise the nurses, taught the nurses and supervise the nurses about that, we collected the data after that and we showed that they are um, um, uh, we achieve less time, we achieve less complication, a lot of things. So you need to have if you have this data, it will be great, and you need to prescribe your role. For example, um, I did teach the the, the nurses um, uh, practical skill. I supervise, I send them off. So you need to describe your role about that and what you did. If you have an audit, and even simple audit about it, documentations, about improving, um, uh, uh, for, for example, waiting time, uh, you have a tool, anything, describe your rule, describe that you collected the data, describe the hard work you did uh, and put it down. So uh, again, I find it very easy first to list what you have been involved. So you write to have a page quality, Beige audit and what we have been involved in, and then your role. So, and after a while, you will you will have the evidence under your hand. Leadership and management. Um, so, leadership and management. It is a very big um, uh, category as well. Uh, for example, if you designed a teaching rota, if you designed a rota for on calls, this is good. If you have been participating in any local organization, um, uh, anything, you need to do that. So there is a leader. Uh, uh, there is this is a management role. Leadership also. If you if you were the senior on call, and and for example, how did you manage? For example, if you have two sick um, uh, colleague and you have to take and, and and leave the whole on call. So describe this thing, and and it will help you with your application. So academic achieving is the same, just have a good read between each of that and, and uh, start from undergraduate, don't start postgraduate, start undergraduate as well. They said, yeah, sometimes they don't want uh, undergraduate um, that much or uh, they will not consider it uh, that, uh, they will not consider, uh, consider it that much, but start from undergraduate, what you did from undergraduate until now. Just list the thing. If you have anything in your mind, just list it. And then again, oh, what was my role? And then again and again and again. You need to start to collect that. So teaching, um, uh, so the teaching can be a lot of things, to be uh, honest. Uh, it can be, um, uh, for example, you did 
a course in teaching. For example, you can say I love teaching. Um, I love teaching and I'm concerned about the medical educations. I have taught uh, undergraduate and you can say the styles of teaching, for example, uh, beside simulations um, um, uh, and um, lectures, presentation and so on. So you can say I, I taught different. You, you don't need to different medical student only, uh, also the nurses, the families as well. Um, so whatever you have, uh, if you have a course in a teaching, you can say, oh, I, and this is let me further uh, to seek um, more, uh, uh, more information about medical education. So I had a degree. So maybe you have a master in medical education. You can use it in, in the additional qualification and you can use it here as well. So you can use both of them in both sides. So personal specification document can help you with that. So read about it. And I, I, I could, uh, it is three, three pages as well, but I didn't put all of them, but I put a few examples so you can see. This is essential criteria. And this is, for example, desirable criteria. So, so for example, if you have uh, ABLS, if you have NLS or you are an instructor, you can put it in your clinical uh, knowledge and expertise. Uh, if you have safeguarding, uh, level one and two, uh, or level uh, level two or three. Um, uh, so you need also you can put it down if you have the course or you have been involved with the case. You need to say that if you raise the, you are the one who raised the issue. You can show that if you attended further step down in the safeguarding, uh, for example, the strategy meeting and so on, so on. So you can put that all in. This is the academic skill. Uh, also, it, it says about that. We cannot tackle all the point here uh, because it, it will take more time. Just read about it and see how is it. Again, it is in the same wood page I showed you. So read about it and say, oh, I can put that. I can put that. If you have degrees, prizes, especially undergraduate, or you have awards or you applied for something, you can uh, put that in your application. Commitment to speciality. So, um, you, uh, I think this is um, this is will show through your all applications. So um, uh, uh, it will show in your uh, clinical skill, clinical experience statement. Also, it will show that. Uh, and don't forget about extra uh, extra curricular activities. For example, you have been working in a unit and the unit is struggling, and you, and, and you had a charity event for that unit. It is extra curricular and show your commitment to pediatric as well. So 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 write that as well. So this, I, I know it is a cramped um, uh, web page, but I just want to show you uh, one of the transferable clinical skill. Communication skill is a transferable clinical skill. IT skill, problem solving, um, uh, managing others and team involvement, organization and planning. So all of these are example of transferable clinical skill and it is all written in personal specification document. So where to find these? Again, pediatric ST1 personal specifications. Uh, this is the last three slides we spoke about and application short listing. So you'll find this information there. Uh, it is very important to look at it while filling these white spaces. And I just want to show you, I'm, I'm trying to bring from Oriel as much. If you have, it is, uh, for example, I have teach the teacher that I put it here. Medical leadership, I put it here. So, so if you have the certificate uploaded, you can upload a lot in, in and it will accommodate that. So upload it just to show your uh, your evidence. It is not mandatory. It is not mandatory, uh, to be honest. But uh, you can just upload it if they want to get back to it. You can see it. Uh, so one of the things that you can upload up to ten courses uh, in the in the. Um, uh, in the in the um, uh, oral applications, and one of them will be, for example, uh, uh, for us, uh, it can be ABLS, a pediatric advanced life support, uh, NLS or uh, NRB. I used NRB before coming to the UK, and then NLS here. So um, uh, NLS, and uh, one of them will be safeguarding level one, uh, level two and uh, level three. So this is about five slots in these 10 slots. Then after that, you show your interest. For example, you are interested in cardiology and you did a course in ECHO. 
put that course in echo and, and, and resonate that in your uh, white space area, like in white space area in clinical experience or in your personal statement, you can write, I fear they're like, um, um, uh, I fear that uh, I'm interesting, more interesting in pediatric cardiology. I did courses, I attended clinic and it was so, and I did a course so and so. I put it here and you can put it in the course. Like it, it, it is your personal space and you can uh, put as much as you can. Then after that, you got shortlisted. You will be invited to interviews. Um, uh, usually when you invite, you will have um, two or uh, uh, two, two weeks. Uh, yeah, interview can be in two weeks or it can be in, in, in one month or uh, two months. So it is not a big window. So to prepare for interview, you need um, you need your uh, your friends, you need your colleague, and um, I advise you to prepare earlier than than that. You don't need to wait until you have the interview to prepare for that. You just even for the application form, you can have your friend. You can reach it if you have a friend who is close to you. He's can, uh, it can read your applications. It can uh, comment uh, on something. If you if you have a question, you can ask him. So uh, having a friends or group, it is very important. Uh, for interviews, you need to prepare early. Uh, so you will not be stressed out if you prepare early. If you just waited until the interview, you need to complete a lot of things in, in, in a short time period. And, and you know what? It is first come fair serves for the slot. So you may not find a slot after one month, you might find slot after one week. So this is, this is what um, the slot will look like. So, um, so um, I have this slot, but usually it has the time from nine, for example, until um, uh, 1600. So you will have this slot and uh, you will have um, the name of the group who will interview uh, you so I have the West Midland. So one group will interview, uh, will uh, will hold your interview, but you will be eligible to apply for everywhere in UK. When you have your preference, you can be accepted anywhere. But one group will interview. So just don't confuse this like oh Westland, I don't want Westland, and 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 you have this only one slot. So it is just this the group who will hold your interview and will give you a score. So booking will be bit through Orioles. So be mind about the date. If you are working, just have a five minutes or 10 minutes go and, and, and see if the, if you have an interview, you will have an email and you will have in your Oriel account in the messages, you will have a reminder like you are being successful, shortlisted and, and uh, inv uh, they will invite you to the interview and um, uh, you just have five minutes to pick your slot. Like you will not be boss night or uh, you, you will be in the in the off or something like that. Just just see how your schedule work around that. Then online interview. Uh, so online interview, it is for think, communication, career, motivation, reflective practice, pediatric clinical reasoning questions. So I found as IMGB, we found it is very easy to do communication and clinical reasoning, more clinical reasoning than communications. And I struggle a little bit in career motivation and reflective uh, practice. So it is everyone problem. And we need each other to tackle this problem. So for communication, I found this book is very important. Uh, and very helpful for me, personally for me. So it is a 10 minute communication and this book have every, um, a lot of communication scenario about 99 uh, scenario or something like that. So it will cover and will give you idea how to tackle each scenario according to the theme of the scenario. For example, breaking bad news or just delivering information or just um, uh, just educations or, or speaking to colleague or speaking to difficult parent or, or whatsoever. So they will give you a structure of that. Um, uh, so it is very uh, known for the people who did the um, uh, clinical. So the clinical, uh, for a clinical exam, you will uh, study from that. So have a colleague who have it and you can borrow it and you can study together uh, uh, about this. Then career motivations. So it is usually the same. Why you choose pediatric? What, what make you a good pediatrician? And so they are going around uh, uh, use your white space area to answer that. So use your what what your personal treat that is good for specialty. What you can add to the specialty, um, uh, and use that. And you need to practice that. Have go down, fill your application, carry motivation. You need to write it down. You need to practice it because in the uh, they will ask you the question and they will look at you for about four minutes. 
Um, so you need in these four minutes, you need to have a very good um, uh, idea uh, about the answer and you need to answer in successive manner and very clear voice. So practice this again and again, and uh, just know what you want to talk about. And then at the end, they may ask you one or uh, two questions. Reflective practice is also is tricky. So you may, you may not have done any reflection until your interview. So what I found it easy, if you have an audit, okay, if you have an audit, for example, what, what make the people think about this audit? If there is an incident, if there is a thing, if there is a... So, so you can go backward and see what, for example, um, uh, um, 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 uh, checking blood glucose into kidney patient in coming to the ER because we missed DKA. Something like that. So, so, uh, so it's it's just what what audit you did or what project you did, why you did this project in the first place. So you can go backward, and then the first thing, for example, communication problem, and you had to have um, uh, a communications uh, courses, or you have to do communications in your department or something like that. So you have a communication, for example, missed bleep, the incident missed bleep, or um, a wrong, uh, wrong uh, medication given to the patient or something like that, uh, milligram, microgram due to, for example, handwriting. Uh, so this is, the, this is the, you need to describe it very briefly. Then you need to prescribe uh, your feeling about that. So at that time, we felt frustrated. Um, uh, and then you need to write a reflection, for example, um, uh, uh, um, um, uh, the patient had to have, uh, for example, a wrong uh, medication. We have to speak to the parent. Parent were um, uh, parent were um, uh, a little bit frustrated. We did with that, and so on. So then, the most important thing in reflection is the learning points. So you spoke after that. I spoke to my supervisors. Uh, it was very good to revise the guidelines, and we review the regional and national uh, guidelines. We want to update the guidelines about that and that. Uh, we I, I I did some courses, for example, in communication, and so 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 just you need to fit these things together. You need to just find a good reflection, because there is one reflection. There is one time they will not ask you more than one. So find a good reflection, write it down. Um, I don't want to say memorize it, but at least just know how to speak about it uh, and and know it in depth. Then you can speak about it freely. So. Uh, I found it is easier also to write down. So you can re, uh, re, uh, use Gibbs reflective cycle. There is a lot of reflective cycle. You can use whatever you want. So you can write down in a paper what happened and then your feeling and then analysis, then conclusion, then action plan. Then try to fill each one of these with um, uh, with few words. Uh, try to concentrate in action plan and in analysis. So analysis is the reflection and action plan what you did next. Uh, to improve or prevent that from happening again or to improve the practice uh, or to improve yourself. So write it down as a point and then make it as you can speak about it, like uh, um, during, for example, my placement in ER, something like that happened. You don't need to describe a lot. It should be very brief descriptions. Um, you don't need to prescribe like uh, numbers and so just brief description. Uh, the most important in reflection is the analysis reflection and the action plan learning point for you. Then uh, pediatric clinical reasoning questions, which I found everyone is doing very well uh, in the practice session. Um, uh, uh, so it is case-based scenario. They will give you a case-based scenario and it is 10 minutes. And most of the time, they will not speak again. So uh, in these 10 minutes, you need to go through how you will approach this case. They may ask you a few questions. Uh, they may nudge you, but it, it is not a prolonged question. It is just short question or something, but most of the time you will go through all of these. Um, so uh, it is usually speak about, uh, they will see uh, and, and pay attention of what they are saying because they will give you a patient, a scenario, a vital signs, and um, you are allowed to write down, by the way, you can ask them, you show them a white paper and you are allowed to write down during this part. So you, um, you will not have time to prepare here. You just need to write down and then go from that. 
just have a moment to collect yourself and then go after that. Uh, pay attention that you are in a DGH uh, district general hospital or you are in tertiary hospital. Is it a research scenario from the vital signs um, or is it a safeguarding scenario as well? Don't forget about this. People usually forget about this. Don't forget like, is it a research scenario? It is a usual scenario or what it is. So in clinical scenario, um, uh, everyone is very good in general, but there is some few thing, don't forget about it. So tell him your impression. For example, I'm, I'm dealing with acute exacerbation of asthma, for example. Um, uh, I'm, I'm dealing, for example, with uh, neonatal um, uh, safeguarding issue. Like tell your impression and then go about that. So if it is a, 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 a recent scenario of it is someone who's a little, don't forget about A, B, C, D. Then after that, go about focused history, what you are expected to focus in history, examination and investigation and what you are found. So put three differential diagnoses in your, in your head and work toward that. Uh, don't, uh, uh, for example, if you have a DKA, don't, don't say, don't forget, oh, I will print out the guideline. Show that you are a safe doctor. Show that you are, even if you don't know, you will print out the guideline. Don't forget about symptomatic management, the men who, one who came for the fracture. Don't forget about the pain management. Don't forget about paracetamol for the fever. And so think about the sitting. If you have a patient in the came to the ER, take him to the recess room. If the patient in postnatal ward, take him to the um, uh, take him to the NICU. So don't forget about your sitting as well. Um, um, uh, where I am and 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 is this uh, one prepared? Don't forget that if you have an ambulance call, you need to prepare. For your patients, uh, you need to prepare um, uh, everything for the patient to be, uh, an assigned role. Don't uh, so it is now less common than before. But don't forget about PPE, um, uh, uh, personal protective equipment. So it was in COVID. You need to say it uh, during the COVID time. But uh, if you have a suspicion, you can uh, you can say it uh, before. It was like you need to tell that you are aware of the infection and so. But now I, th I think the people is going away from um, PPE and we receive email in from work every day, how to um, decrease it less and less. Don't forget about escalation, be a safe doctor. You are applying to ST1, you are not a registrar, even if you are a very experienced doctor. So you need to escalate to your registrar, consultant, other who is ever put a crash call, call the anesthesia or was over appropriately. Don't forget about teamwork and leadership, assigning rule. You need to assign the rule about that. Then ongoing management. After finished, say, I will document my work, reflect on that. Um, uh, uh, if there is opportunity, I will teach, uh, I, I, I will read about it and teach junior student. Don't forget, as I said, to use a guideline and protocols. Is your, be what the pathway of your case is going to be HDU, ICU admission, you need to call the retrieval team to come and collect the baby after stabilization or just will be admission. Uh, can uh, Would you need to call the social worker? Would you need to see other children as well if it is safeguarding and so on and so on. And if it is like a chronic management, for example, patient who is asthma or uh, CB or something like that, you need to inform the community team, health visitor, uh, GB and so on. So um, uh, school. So these bits will make it stand out. You cannot say all of that in clinical scenario, to be honest, and it is not applicable to all scenarios, but ever, whatever you have, uh, it will be very great. And don't forget the communication. So if you have a parent with you, don't say, I will update the parents and so on, so on. So you need to, and you need to communicate to the team as well. Uh, don't forget again an accidental injury and then accidental injury don't forget the clinical if you have a cold baby who is mom was um, whose his parent were were uh, not taking care and they found him uh, with mom for example in the park with with not in the winter is not covering very well with with cloth don't forget that to check the temperature check the glucose and so so it is obviously an accidental injury but don't forget the medical part as well so it is go other way so this is one part of the resources of the books. So it is big books. You don't need to go all through it. For example, ABLS, just go for the emergency management of if I have airway problem, what I need to do, connect oxygen, keep saturation above 94, and so on, so on, so on. If you have a shock, what I need to do, if you have um, a brain injury or ICB, what I need to do. So you need the major thing. You don't need to go in detail at all. So be selective. It is a big book, be selective. Communication I spoke about. Medical interview is a very nice book. I found it very 
useful for uh, ST3 and ST4 because it has a very govern a govern a governance scenario, which is very good. But uh, you can just, if you have time, look through it um, uh, um, uh, just in case in, in, in clinical scenario, it has some governance issue as well. Um, uh, and it has some, um, it is a big book as well. So, so you don't need to go through it, but you have time. You are in early applications. It will give you a, a, how the applications goes in general um, uh, and how to present yourself. Uh, it has a real example like, for example, someone is speaking about their experience, and so so it is. It you can just formulate whatever you have like that. So have go go through it, and it is in Amazon. I think it's five um, pounds or something, the old version. So it's up to you. Again, practice together. It is a very good opportunity now. Um, uh, it is early on. Find the people who who's thinking like you, and and just practice together some people will know something some people will know some more scenarios than the other just practice together and be mindful of each other and just try to practice 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 you may not at the beginning you may be feel terrible like by two months three months you will feel more confident by four months you will feel more more confident and interview will be easier to you uh to, to do it so practice together and practice together and practice together again so again, I hope that most of you or all of you today uh, will have a successful application going from 0 0.0 to 0.100%. So good luck everyone. And hopefully I will see a few of you uh, in West Yorkshire. If anyone applied, please reach out. Happy to answer any questions. And I just want to show you at the end when you go to in, in your applications. So each, when you apply, it will be green then all of this will be gray. Then long listing will be green, short listing if you be green. And if you click this, you will have your uh, mark down here, then interview, then finally offers. Thank you, everyone. Any question? Thank you so much, Etra, for talking about the training perspective. And I really like the, how the way that you took a snapshot for the Oriel. Hopefully everyone from the ATP today will get the, all the green boxes next in the Oriel and get their training box. Yeah, we are rooting for you guys. <laughs> No, it was really interesting. Thank you so much. So we've been trying to answer some of the questions in the chat while you were talking. I think some of them were directed to you. Uh, somebody asked about the PDF forms, if you have the PDF uh, forms of the books ready. Uh, which uh, for, for the books? So uh, uh, could you message me privately? Um, just have a list and message me privately if you... Uh, um, um it's it's um so it's it has copyright so yeah. we can uh, we cannot uh, uh have any pdf of that but we can uh, have a chat privately about that absolutely we can we can put the israel's email in the chat and then you can uh, contact her um any other questions specific for Isra? which certificate is acceptable european or american it changes every year ahmed according to the, uh, the application specification so just check check the guidance because they change it uh, each year but the yeah. till last year they were equivalent to each other yeah so when i applied i didn't have abls i did abls now i have BALS, which is american equivalent and i have nrb which is american equivalent to nls nuneta station program which is equivalent and they accepted that um, and, and by the way, they, although you need to apply at the time of application, they are, they will say to you like, could you amend that? This is not acceptable and so, but you need to submit your application in time. Uh, but if you miss something in crest form or something, they will send it back to you and they will open a part and tell you, please do that uh, within the next two days and you will amend it. So you can um, just ask. And someone... Just let me check. Someone asking about experience. Uh, Hala is asking, could I speak about my experience in Saudi Arabia, which was before coming to the UK four years ago? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. You know what I did in, in, my, in my statement? I said I pride myself in working in three countries. So I work in Sudan, I work in Saudi Arabia, and I work in UK. So it is a strong point to work. And all the trainee here, they will have a half time. All of, if you see the consultant, they have went to Africa, for example, for a year and came back. So your, your experience is very, very valuable. Uh, they're asking you about the CRIST form. Is it mandatory? 
yes. for the overseas applicant. Yes, it is very, very mandatory and an overseas consultant can sign it. Absolutely. Don't forget to tick all the boxes. And, um, sorry, it's, it's all flying around. <laughs> ah, uh, any information there. about consultants from overseas without NHS experience or not? GM yeah, absolutely. The overseas consultant, yes, Sarah, they, they can't sign it, even if they don't have a GMC number. All right, that's it. Any further questions for sorry. the staff? Iman, for, for consultant from overseas, they just need to have the registration number for the um, from whatever, yeah, body, from whatever yeah. body they have. So it should be clearly stated on the when they sign the CRISP form or the competency form. Thank you. Thank you for no uh, Shayma, she's asking CRISP form, e the email should be official email or uh, it doesn't matter it's an official or a personal email as long as he's he's checking it but we, they do prefer the, the official email they prefer the official email even in the reference they prefer that um and um they will ask about the registrations form so you ask your consultant for if you are in saudi arabia there is a registration form in in in, in uh, saudi commission of health subspecialty for each one so they will ask about that so you need to to have it in hand uh, for the long listing. Yeah. Well, that's it. Thank you, everyone. Before closing up, um, I just want to tell you that the BSAP CH are sponsoring a feedback, um, an application feedback uh, and uh, support uh, activity this month. Our deadline is on the 20th of November. So if you are applying this round, please, you can send your application to us at bsapch.info. .co.uk and uh, our mentors who are a senior trainee, they can have a look at your application and we can give you a feedback and, uh, and mentor you throughout the process. Bearing in mind this, this uh, activity is just for the VSAP CH member and the overseas uh, Sudanese applicants as well. So we strongly encourage you, if you are not a member, please do register with us and please fill up the feedback link. We would like to hear from you about your suggestions and what do you like to us to sponsor for next activities. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope best of luck for you all and we will see you again probably next month for uh, more of interview preparation workshops. Uh, have a good day. Bye. Please don't forget to fill the feedback form. Thank you. Stop the recording.